That was one round of the most perilous game of chance known to man, the beer hunter. And it is, of course, a complete game of chance. Do you take the can that's been shaken up or do you not take it? But here's a question, and it's one that's concerning us a great deal in Man Lab. Can you make your own luck in a game of chance? Maybe you can. Step this way. We're going to talk about something called the Monty Hall problem, named after Monty Hall, who was the host of an American TV quiz show called Let's Make a Deal. Now, typically, in the show, the winning contestant would be presented with three mystery prizes like this, in boxes. You can't see what they are. One of them is a good prize. The other two are duff prizes. In our case, one of these boxes contains a lovely large slice of gala pie. The other two contain a bowl of dreary salad. Now, at this point, the game show host says to me, Good luck. Pick a box. So I'm going to say, I choose box one. And the game show host then says, You've made your choice. I shall now help you out by revealing that in box three, there is a dreary salad. Now that you've seen that, would you like to change your mind? Now, at this point, many of you at home, I imagine, will be going, ah, but that's just a 50-50 chance. What can you do about it? But not so. According to game theorists who have been working on this sort of thing since the 1930s, I should change my mind and I stand more chance of winning. So, yes, please, I would like this box instead. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> I don't get that at all. Well, that is a piece of garlic pie. That is a piece of pie, and you got it right. And I just, yeah, but yeah. I, don't I know what you mean. Maths. I know what you mean. It doesn't seem to make sense because that box has gone, but we know what was in it, so that seems to change the odds. But apparently, and this has been debated for decades by statisticians, by PhD mathematicians, and it is supposedly true. In that situation, you should change your mind. So what we're going to do to test the theory is play the Monty Hall version of the beer hunter. Three cans per round, two are explosive, one is safe. But of course that's not very scientific either. The only way we can make this statistically viable is to play a hundred rounds. So, just to reiterate, each of the 100 rounds of The Beer Hunter will feature three tins of beer. Two of them will have been banged on the Anvil of Doom by Rory over there. Viet Tom will present me with the three tins and I will choose one. He will then remove one of the remaining dangerous ones. And he will then offer me the opportunity to change my mind. And I'm always going to change my mind, meaning Sim is always left with the one remaining tin. Helen over there will keep score of how often each one of us buys the farm. And if the game theory is correct, Simmy should end up covered in more beer than me. And now, to set the mood and increase the tension, some insect noises from the BBC Sound Archive and some artistic camera shots. Most game theorists will predict that Simmy will lose two-thirds of the time or 66.6%, with me only losing one-third, or 33.3%. Let's see. Three cans. I pick one, and Tom takes away a dangerous one. You're going to tie out on yourself. <laughs> I then always change my mind and pick the other can, leaving Simmy with the remaining one. Come on, game theory. Do your thing. Three, two, one, fire. No! Bollocks. 
So this is why we have to do this properly over 100 rounds, because one go doesn't prove anything statistically. I lost that. I'm dead. But overall, well, let's see. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, fire. Three rounds in, and game theory is beginning to look about as relevant to the real world as the golden shot. But then... Sergeant Simmy's winning streak has been broken. The game is on. Three, two, one. Fire. Three, two, one. Just to be absolutely clear, this is a pure experiment. I can't see what they're doing. There's no cheating. I'm not even looking when I choose the tin. This is absolutely a statistical experiment, and the score is Simi has died 28 times to my nine. <laughs> Halfway through the beer hunter. <laughs> It was at this point that things started to get a little strange. What we didn't realise was that, although we weren't actually drinking the beer, the sheer amount of CO2 being released from the cans into our sweaty tent was giving everyone low-grade hypercapnia, or carbon dioxide poisoning. Do not try this kind of mathematical research at home or in a pound shop mock-up of Vietnam. All thoughts of game theory and clever number crunching had fallen away. Our clothes dripped with beer. Our fingers, shriveled and wrinkled, fumbled with soft nails at ceaseless ring pulls. Pneumonia had taken Simi. Collateral damage was everywhere. The horror. The horror. This is the end. Five rounds left. Beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end of our elaborate plans, the end of everything that stands, the end. Ah, no ah, ah. 60 39. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Final round, gentlemen. Final round. Despite our escape attempt, the final point would have been to me. So the final score, Simi dies 60 times. I've died 40 times. Meaning, what? <laughs> there, there... Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Four hot baths later, and with therapy for post-alcoholic stress disorder pending, we tried once more to figure out the maths. Here is a theory that Tom and I have come up with, and this is after a great deal of heated debate. Let's say I choose this can. There's a 33% chance that that is the safe one, and there's a 66% chance that the safe one is in those two. But this is where it all becomes a bit corrupted, because Viet Tom the game show host comes in to remove a can, but he has to remove a dangerous one. Let's say it's that one. Now, of course, that one could be dangerous as well, but there's now a 50-50 chance that that is the safe one. Somehow, 17% of the odds disappear with that can because Tom has to take a dangerous one. So I should swap from my original 33% chance to my new 
50% chance. And the amazing thing is, if you extrapolate the ratio 50 to 33, you arrive at 60 to 39.6, or only 0.4 adrift from the result we got. That's less than half a tin of beer out from what our theory would predict. So if you are a proper statistician, please do not write to us on manlab at bbc.co.uk because our brains hurt very badly already. But I think something we have demonstrated is that luck itself is not to be trusted. As the American author R. E. Shea said, depend on the rabbit's foot if you will, but remember, it didn't work for the rabbit.